at the end of this lecture, you should be able to know what is the morphology of platelets, describe the events involved in the hemostasis, discuss the mechanisms of blood coagulation, discuss various bleeding disorders, and what are the different what are the different blood coagulation tests? Assalamualaikum. Today we will start our new topic that is platelets and hemostasis. Platelets. Platelets are also called as thrombocytes. Their normal value is one lakh fifty thousand to three lakhs per microliter. All the blood cell lines are produced from the bone marrow. So is the platelets. Platelets are formed from the pluri Stem cell. From the pluri-hematopoietic stem cells, megakaryocytes are formed, which in turn ultimately form platelets. Platelets do not have any nucleus and they can't reproduce. Their lifespan is 7 to 10 days. Now, the morphology. Platelets are rounded oval bodies having 2 to 4 micrometer diameter. Now, the physical and the chemical characteristics of the platelets. The membrane of the Platelet consists of a the membrane of the platelet consists of a glycoprotein cord. Also present in between the glycoprotein cord is the are the phospholipids. Its membrane also contains receptors for the collagen, for the ADP, for the fibrinogens, von Willebrand factor, and the prothrombin. Within the cytoplasm of the platelets are the contractile filaments such as actin and the myosin. From postenin, which causes the contraction of the platelets, lysosomes, serotonin, ADPs, and other nucleotides. Also present within the cytoplasm are the clotting factors, platelet drive growth factor, and large stores of the calcium ion. This platelet drive growth factor causes the proliferation of the fibroblast cells, which in turn take parts in the healing of the damaged tissues or the blood vessels. Also present within the cytoplasm are the enzyme system for the prostaglandins, for the ATPs, ADPs, and the fibrin stabilizing factor. Endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus are also present within the cytoplasm. So, what is the function of the platelets? Function of the platelets is the hemostasis. It is not the homeostasis. It is hemostasis. That is the stoppage of the blood or the arrest of bleeding. It consists of four events. Vascular construction, platelet plug formation, clotting and the fibrous tissue invasion of the blood clot and dissolution of the clot. Now, the vascular construction. This is the first step in the hemostasis. It consists of three processes. Local myogenic spasm, release of local factors from the platelets and the damaged tissues and the nervous reflex. What is this local myogenic reflex? Whenever there is a damage to the blood vessel or any trauma, signals are sent to the smooth muscles of the vessels, which in turn signals are sent to the smooth muscles of the blood vessels, which in turn causes the vasoconstriction of a vessel. Whenever there is a damage to the blood vessel, there is release of certain vasoconstrictor substances from the damaged blood vessels such as thromboxin A2, which in turn causes contraction of the smooth muscles of the vessel wall, ultimately resulting in vasoconstriction of the vessel. Now, the nervous reflex. When the blood vessel is cut, there is a trauma or a pain. Pain signals go to the brain, which in turn send motor signals back to the smooth muscles of the vessel resulting in vasoconstriction. Now, the platelet plug formation. It involves the aggregation of the platelets. Platelets, when come in contact with the damaged vessel wall, they change their shape drastically. They become irregular in shape and send out pseudopodias in all directions. The contractile filaments or the proteins contract forcefully, such as actin, myosin, and thrombostinin. These platelet contra contraction causes degranulation. The surface becomes sticky and it attaches to the exposed collagen plus the von Willebrand protein that leaks from the plasma into the tissues. Thromboxin A2 will combine with the ATP and incre increase the stickiness of the platelets with the vessel wall. Platelet activation factor also plays an important role in the formation of platelet plug. Now, the third step is the blood coagulation. 
the clot in cases of severe trauma will develop within 15 to 20 seconds, while in case of minor trauma, it takes one to two minutes to develop. Clot formation will be completed within three to six minutes and retraction will start after 20 minutes. In the next slide, we will study about the clotting process and the clotting factors. Now, the third process is the fibrous organization or the dissolution of the clot. Whenever a clot is formed, it then follow two of the possible courses. Either invasion by the fibroblast resulting in the formation of the connective tissue. This occurs in case of small vessel holes, while clot can dissolve without any remnant. This occurs in case of large vessel holes. This figure shows us the clotting process in a traumatized vessel. Whenever there is a damage to the vessel, first of all, there will be the agglutination of the platelets to form a platelet plug. Then fibrin threads will appear and then a clot is formed and ultimately within 10 to 20 hours, retraction of the clot will take place. Now, the blood coagulation. The basic theory of the clotting is that whenever there is a damage to the vessel, a certain reaction occurs within the blood and the net result is the formation of a complex of the activated substances such as prothrombin activator. This prothrombin activator catalyzes the conversion of the prothrombin into the thrombin. This prothrombin is alpha-2 globulin. It is an unstable protein having a molecular weight of about 68,700. In the presence of calcium ions, prothrombin activator will convert prothrombin into the thrombin and this thrombin catalyzes the conversion of fibrinogen into the fibrinogen monomer units. Thrombin is a proteolytic enzyme and its molecular weight is 33,700. While this fibrinogen, its molecular weight is 340,000. It results in the formation of fibrinogen monomer units in the presence of thrombin. These fibrinogen monomer units in the presence of calcium ions form fibrin fibers and thrombin formed initially activated fibrin stabilizing factor which catalyzes the conversion of fibrin fibers into the cross-linkage fibrin fibers. Blood coagulation. Prothrombin activated formation is the rate limiting step. Platelets have a role in the conversion of the prothrombin to thrombin and the prothrombin is synthesized in the liver. Vitamin K is required for the prothrombin activation. Fibrinogen forms fibrin. It plays role in clot retraction. Clot formation is a vicious cycle. Vicious cycle is that cycle which is caused by the positive feedback and it sometimes may lead to death. Here are shown the clotting factors. Out of these, 2, 7, 9 and 10 are the vitamin K dependent factors and their source is intestinal flora. Now we will discuss the intravascular anticoagulation or the prevention of the blood clotting in normal vascular system. There are certain factors which are involved in the prevention of blood clotting in the normal vascular system. First is the endothelial surface factors. Endothelial surface normally is smooth. It has a glycopelix layer. Also present on the endothelial surface are the thrombomodulin, which combines with the thrombin to form thrombomodulin thrombin complex, also called as protein C. This protein C in turn inactivates the factor 5 and factor 8 and intravascular coagulation. Second is the antithrombin action of the fibrin and the antithrombin C. Almost 85 to 90% of the thrombin is dissolved by the fibrin and 10 to 15 percent of the thrombin is absorbed by the fibrin along with antithrombin 3 heparin. Heparin is the natural anticoagulant which is present in our body. It is a negatively charged conjugated polysaccharide. Now how the lysis of the blood clot occur? There is a role of the plasmin. Whenever there is a tissue injury there is the release of the clotting factors and the clot is formed. A large amount of the plasminogen is entrapped in the clot. This will not become plasmin until tissue plasminogen activator is released by the damaged 
endothelial vessel wall. The injured tissues in the vascular endothelium slowly release tissue plasminogen activator a few days later after the clot has stopped the bleeding. This tissue plasminogen activator will convert plasminogen present normally in the blood into plasmin. This plasmin is the proteolytic enzyme, which in turn removes the remaining unnecessary blood clots, the diseases or the bleeding disorders. Whenever there is vitamin K deficiency, we know that 2, 7, 9, 10 clotting factors are the vitamin K dependent factors. And vitamin K is a fat soluble vitamin. So whenever there is a deficiency of vitamin K in the diet or whenever there is a liver disease, there is decreased secretion of the bile because the vitamin K is fat soluble vitamin. So it requires fat for its absorption. When liver is damaged, decreased secretion of the bile occurs. So deficiency of the vitamin K occurs because of decreased absorption resulting in the formation of decreased clotting factors. Now, the hemophilia. Hemophilia is the sex-linked genetic disorder. Females are the carriers and the males are the sufferer of this disease. This disease is genetically transmitted as a recessive trait to the X chromosome. We know that females are the carriers of the hemophilia and the males are the sufferers. It has three types. Type A is the classical. It is due to the factor 8 deficiency and factor 8 smaller, factor, smaller component of the factor 8. Whenever there is the deficiency of factor 8 smaller component, it will result in hemophilia. But due to the deficiency of the larger component of the factor 8, von Willebrand disease will occur. Type B. Type B hemophilia is caused by the factor of by the deficiency of the factor 9. And it is almost 15% while type A is almost 85%. Type C, this is the rare type of hemophilia and it is caused by the deficiency of factor 11. Now, thrombocytopenia. In the thrombocytopenia, there is the deficiency of the clotting factors or the platelets. We will study it in the next slide. Now, the thromboembolic conditions such as DIC or disseminated intravascular coagulation. This occurs throughout the body in which microclots are formed, resulting in septicemia. As a result of septicemia, endotoxins are produced, which in turn causes the activation of the clotting factors. Increased clot formation will take place, which results in decreased availability of the clotting factors, which will ultimately result in bleeding. Now, the thrombocytopenic purpura. Thrombocytopenia is caused by the deficiency of the platelets. It can be primary or secondary. Primary is idiopathic where the cause is unknown. While secondary is due to the any disease such as bone marrow disorder. For example, in dengue, there is platelets deficiency or certain antibiotic. We can differentiate it from the hemophilia in which there is spontaneous bleeding such as swollen joints, bleeding from the larger vessels. In hemophilia, bleeding time and the uh, prothrombin time are normal, while the clotting time is prolonged. While in thrombocytopenia, clotting time and the prothrombin time are normal, only the bleeding time is prolonged. What are the features of idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura? Here, bleeding is from the smaller vessels, while in hemophilia, it was from the larger vessels. Punctate hemorrhages occur throughout the body and the purplish blotches over the skin. There is prolonged bleeding time, while in hemophilia, bleeding time is normal. Clotting time and the prothrombin time are normal in idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. Only the prolonged is the bleeding time. Now, the clinical anticoagulants. These are the anticoagulants which we can be used in the clinical conditions. For example, heparin is the IV anticoagulant. Its action lasts for 1.5 to 4 hours and this increases the clotting time of the blood from 6 to 30 minutes. Heparin can be used during surgeries, for example, in heart and lung machine, comorins or the Vortran. They are also the clinical anticoagulants. They can be used orally. 
Morphine inhibits the enzyme that is vitamin K F oxide reductase, which keeps the vitamin K in the reduced form. And this reduced form of the vitamin K adds carboxyl group to the clotting factors 2, 7, 9, 10, resulting in the activation of the clotting factors. When morphine inhibits this enzyme, vitamin K will be in the oxidized form and is unable to activate this clotting factor. So it can be used as anticoagulant. Now, if we need to clot the blood outside the body, for example, when taking a blood samples, then we can use siliconized containers or heparin or oxalate ions. These oxalate ions causes the precipitation of the calcium oxalate, resulting in decrease in the concentration of calcium ions in the blood. This calcium is required for the activation of clotting factors. So there will be decreased activation of the clotting factors. Another can be used is the citrate ions. This also deionizes the calcium so that calcium cannot be used for the activation of the clotting factors. Citrate substances have an important advantage over the oxalate anticoagulants because oxalate is toxic to the body. While moderate quantities of the citrate can be injected IV and they can be removed within a few minutes by the liver and they are polymerized into the glucose or metabolized directly to give energy.